So, I mean, how long has the GLBT Expo been running? Well, we started 13 years ago. And when we started, it was the Gay and Lesbian Business and Entertainment Expo. And we did that show for seven years. And then we were contacted, and they said, and the people who called said, you know, we've grown as a community. What happened to the B and the T? So we said, oh my gosh. So we, we changed the name to the uh, original GLBT Expo, and we've been using that since then. And it'll be our, this is our 13th year, and as you can see, we get about 21,000 people who come. It's an amazing event, and we started 13 years ago, and people actually would hang up on us when we call. We would call and say, hello, we're, we're doing a show for the gay community, and they'd say, oh, no, no, that will never work. And, oh, no, that's ridiculous, they'd hang up. And we actually have been credited with outing corporate America because we persisted, and we got the big names. We have so many big, we have Bud here, Budweiser, they've always been friends of the gay community. And all the people you see here have been with us from like the second or third year, and they have remained loyal. We have Prudential, we have Bud, we have HSBC, Citibank. We have all of these fabulous people. And they just love the community and they support it. So it's a great relationship. There are so many people, Charmaine, that have never been to an expo like this. Know, and just find. wonder, I mean, are you teaching people how to be LGBT? I mean, what is the purpose of this Expo, what, what really goes on here? Well, we feel that the gay community is an important, a very integral part of just the whole the country, really. And when we started this event, we, we thought, let's get people to recognize the potential of the gay community for their products. And you know, money is always the bottom line, yeah. and people are so interested in that. Yes. And it's a whole new market for them. It's a niche that no one really thought of. And I think it, it, it's important because the community is very educated, brand loyal, uh, they have double income, and they're able to support the people who recognize them and respect them. And the purpose of the event is to bring face to face these people so that they can actually see who is supporting the community and, and, and the, the exhibitors and the sponsors get the satisfaction of knowing that these folks are going to be their customers. So it's a wonderful situation for everyone. It's a win-win for everyone. Is there a profit made at this expo? Does the, does the expo generate a revenue? Oh, sure. It's a business like any other business. Where does that revenue go? Well, the revenue goes to the staff. We have to pay for the hall, the decorator. And it's, it's a small business, you know, like any other business in this country. Uh, we, we get the sponsors and the exhibitors. We spend oodles of money on advertising. So, you know, at the end there's this profit and that's where we pay our employees and the rent and all of that stuff. So it's a business. What does an event like this cost to produce? Um, well, the decorating bill is generally about $90,000 just for that. The hall is probably 50. It's a very expensive endeavor. You know, it's a couple hundred thousand dollars, at least, maybe more. So then I when... don't handle all the money <laughs> things, so I can't give you an exact so... thing, but it's a very expensive endeavor. So Charmaine, if we're spending $90,000 mm -hmm. on decorations and plus a hundred here, where does the profit come in? From well, renting the booths or? Yes, we rent the booths and we have sponsors and, you know, it, um, it and then we, we have people who pay, you know, a small amount to get in. So, you know, it's just to pay, and it's to keep it going. Sure. You know, it's not, it's not like, you know, gazillions of dollars, but it certainly is to keep it going. And that's, it's a nice, it's a wonderful um, opportunity for people to come, for us to have a business, and we've been doing this for a long time. We have other, other shows as well, so this is one of our shows. But let's get specific here. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to quite a few members within the LGBT community mm -hmm. that support this show thoroughly, but want to see it end so there's not like, well, we need to do exclusive events to say we're LGBT. We're just regular members of society. Oh, that's right. Do you think that this expo strives to like eliminate itself and become regular members of society? Because that's what the participants have been telling me that they really want in our future. Well, okay, that's a very interesting point. Um, I must first say that we have, over the last 13 years, donated tremendously to the, the gay community. And we have about 30 or 40 nonprofits that we allow in. And, you know, so we donate the space and we donate and we give them the opportunity to promote whatever it is, whether it's an AIDS, AIDS you know, uh, 
organization or whether it's a small LGP group, you know, GLBT group, whatever it is. And there are people who, and I believe that everyone is the same, but the gay community likes to be different and they want their own thing. So I think that's the preponderance of the opinions, that they want to have their own thing. But what about not wanting to have an expo that's LGBT? I mean, that's the I real question. Heard that. that's the, really, I've heard that's it a few the... times. Like, and there are supporters, people who have tables here that uh -huh. say, I want to be at a point where we don't need to like yeah, be the different people. Yeah. Eventually, but I think what will happen is that will come eventually. And eventually there won't be a need for this type of an expo. Because all of those exhibitors you see in there will become so familiar with the, the community that it'll just, you know, it's new now. This has only been going on for like the last decade, so this is something new. And you have to give it time to progress. Well, what is the mission of this expo? Uh, the mission of this expo is to bring exhibitors and sponsors to introduce them to the gay community as a whole. Okay. That's, that's the mission. And so for them to, to get those people as customers, mm -hmm. as clients, um, because everyone has special needs and special, you know, lifestyles and whoever comes into the show recognizes that the gay community will be a customer of theirs. So it's for them to profit from the gay community, but it's a chance for the gay community to profit from them as well. What's the hardest thing about producing this event? And what's the easiest thing? Everything is hard. <laughs> what's um, the hardest part about producing? I mean, this is, you're at the Jacob Javits Expo Center, which is humongous, legendary in New York. Okay, let me tell you what the hardest. The hardest okay. is to get people to recognize that the gay community is an excellent niche market. Okay. Um, that, that, that if you see and come to the expo, because they want to know, the gay community wants to know personally, they want to meet you. They don't want to do it online. They don't want to do it over the phone. They want to have a face, they want face-to-face -face recognition. And they want FaceTime. And that's the reason that it's important. And some people say, well, you know what, I'll just do business online. I'm telling you, it's not going to work. And there's so many wits, so many cracks to fall through online. And here, everybody gets to know, and it's a real personal thing. They, they meet their bankers in person. They meet their, their financial advisors in person. Selling the expo. I'm already here and I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. What's the hardest part about producing it, making it happen? And okay. what's the easiest? Well, that is the hardest, getting people to come to get selling the booths for the show. The, selling, selling the booths is hard. And the sponsorship. The floor is full. So. Right. We have a great staff. We have the same staff for 13 years. So okay. the participants are here. The floor is full. So yes. the hardest thing would be to get the booths rented out? Yes. I would say sponsors and having you know booth sales. And then I do all the advertising and marketing to get all these folks here. And I, well, it's very hard for me because I have to deal with about 30 or 40 magazines. I have TV. I have radio. And I have to keep everything organized. So it's, it's, it's like... It's, if you're a planner of a wedding, say, and a little small thing, okay, think about it with 20,000 people and 400 booths, and think about how difficult that is. So the whole process is difficult. It's an amazing process, and we do it with a wonderful staff. We have about 10 people, and we, 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 are, we baby our people. We know who they are intimately. We know what their needs are, what their desires, and we know, we know a lot of the attendees as well. They've been coming for so many years. So that's the hardest, though, getting everything together. It's really, to put it together is an amazing. We have a whole year to do it.